Well, it's ironic as the world spiraled down into the grasp of the Great Depression, Cadillac at that point had only been a mid priced luxury car maker. Rolls Royce, Bentley, and of course Packard had been the ultimate in motor cars. Well that was about to change as Cadillac developed and brought out their V16 Cadillac. It was this model that brought them to the forefront of people and to the forefront of the luxury car market. Not only was the motor mechanical genius, it was also an aesthetically pleasing package. The polished valve covers on the top with the black porcelainized exhaust were beautiful. They ran all the wires inside a tin cover over top in between the valve covers to hide all the loom and hide all the spark plug wires. It was a work of art, a beautiful piece of machinery in body styles that were too many to count. Well, what would one of these cars cost back then? It was almost $10,000 to get one of these, therefore there were only 3250 51 V16s built between 1930 and 31. Now Packard, Pierce, Marmon, they all tried to copy Cadillac with the introduction of the V12 and the V16 with Marmon, but they weren't insulated like Cadillac with GM around them. They had to do it on their own and what happened was is a lot of those great manufacturers and a lot of those great vehicles disappeared as Cadillac continued to be the luxury car for North Americans. One of the most interesting things about this car when you first fire it up is how quiet it is. And that's part of the beauty of this V16 Cadillac motor. It was designed by a fellow named Owen Knacker, and he was a Cadillac engineer and a genius. Not only was the motor beautiful, it was also mechanically superior to just about anything else out there. It had a very narrow V, a 45 degree V, which made it for an aesthetically pleasing motor. It had a three inch bore with a four inch stroke, which made for sound performance. Now as far as running, you can hear now it's idling, you can barely hear it run. The transmission is actually louder, which is a three-speed synchro mesh. On a 148-inch wheelbase, it's a smooth running car. It's got a leaf spring front axle and a torque tube rear suspension on it, and drum brakes which are all vacuum assisted. But getting back to the motor, that's really the interesting piece here. It had a cast iron block with an aluminum crankcase. And as far as ignition went, it had two coils, a single distributor with two rotors in it for spark. Why was the motor so quiet with basically a mechanical valve system is he created a hydraulically actuated eccentric bushing in the rocker arm. And what it would actually do is as you were, as the motor was running, the rocker arm would want to come away from the valve as after it had finished its cycle. And in order to keep it close to the valve, this hydraulic actuated bushing would push it back down to the tip of the valve and allow the rocker arm not to lift off the valve tip. Therefore, when it came time to touch back down on the valve and open it, you didn't hear that typical mechanical sound that you would with just about any other motor on the market. Matter of fact, there aren't too many motors today that work the same. It was sort of the first hydraulic cam, if you want, except it worked off the rocker arm instead of the lifter. Really interesting concept for 1930. Now, as far as the rest of the mechanics of this car, typical Cadillac for 1930, but it was the motor that actually put Cadillac on the map as something superior. And isn't it ironic that in 2004 or 2003, what motor are they coming back to to try and put Cadillac back on the map as a superior vehicle? The V16. Well, not that much different than today's collectors. There were build sheets available from GM when these cars were produced. This car happens to have that original build sheet. And when it was restored, it was restored exactly the way the car left the factory. It has the Fleetwood body. It was a two-door roadster. The artillery wheels, ultra rare, but not super desirable. Most people had the original spokes on their car. It looked classier at the time. Now, what does a car like this cost to restore? three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. If you look at the fit and finish, it's perfect. If you look at the paintwork, it's sanded and polished to within an inch of its life. The chrome plating is just beautifully done. There are no waves in the rad grill. There are no waves in the bumper. It's beautifully finished on both sides. This car here, probably the best V16 Cadillac Roadster in the world. So what's it worth? Probably just the price of the restoration, between four and five hundred thousand dollars.